And now for video six. Video six is a review. We're going to highlight the key elements discussed about risk management in the previous five videos and bring it all together in one cohesive whole. So, risk management. First, just remember the important technical definitions involved. Uh, hazard, what is a hazard? Hazard is a source of potential harm. And an unwanted event is a situation is a potential situation where that hazard can be released. Now, hazards, you'll recall, are usually related to a source of energy. And it's the release of that source of energy in an undesirable manner that can cause harm. Or lots of different sources of energy, gravitational, electrical, mechanical, chemical pressure, noise, thermal, radiant, body mechanics, many different sources of energy, and if those energy sources are not controlled, their release can cause an unwanted event. This process is described as a hazard. Now once you've identified a hazard, what are you going to do? Ideally, you want to eliminate it. However, that's not always possible. So if you can't eliminate a hazard, you use a series of mitigation techniques, including substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment. Uh, and we've listed these on the slide in order from most effective to least effective. Obviously eliminating the hazard is the most effective way to prevent it. Substituting generally minimizes. Engineering controls can minimize. Administrative controls can minimize. And personal protective equipment should always really be your last choice because it's pretty much the least effective way to mitigate the dangers associated with a hazard. Now, once we've identified these hazards and we're looking at different ways to mitigate against them, we're going to consider the risk, where we find the risk as the chance of something happening that will have a negative impact on objectives. And usually we're going to try and quantify this risk as a product of probability of occurrence and the consequence of the outcome. So, as an example, we would say that, you know, if we have something that's high probability of occurring and has a high consequence, then that would be a high risk hazard. So, high probability, high consequence, high risk. And the probability and consequence are independent terms that vary depending on what hazard is being discussed. So once hazards and risks are identified, we then move on to a risk assessment procedure. Um, one of the ways to assess risk, there are many. One that we looked at in particular is qualitative risk assessment, where you create a matrix of probability versus consequence, and then the matrix elements are the products of those terms and you end up with something that looks a bit like the table shown here where we see that you know pro highly probable events with high consequences are the largest risk and low probability events with minimal consequences are the lowest risk and we kind of since this is only qualitative, we have some definitions for relating quantitative descriptions of risk to more concrete descriptions, uh, where we have, you know, events that are certain will occur often, events that are rare are, un are so unlikely that they will probably never occur. And we then have a similar scale for consequences where a catastrophic, catastrophic event is one that kills people, that destroys, the, destroys chemical plants, that uh, endangers the environment and the public, uh, that uh, attracts government investigators, and obviously those are really bad. And then consequence can be scaled all the way down to insignificant events where, you know, very minor incidents, almost nothing happens and 
you're going to be defining each of your hazardous scenarios in terms of these two sets of definitions. And of course, there are lots of other ways to uh, assess risk, lots of different protocols and approaches. So you need to select the one that's right for your situation. For instance, failure modes, effects, and criticality analysis is a proactive approach to risk assessment that uh, looks primarily at the hardware elements of an engineering system. And, but you have to remember that's a constraint in and of itself. An engineering system consists of more than just the hardware elements. There are the operators, there are the design elements that are related to the environment, all sorts of different things that uh, beyond just the hardware. Uh, one of my personal favorites, the uh, bow tie analysis, is uh, at least visually a very effective way to consider threats, how you control those threats, what sort of hazardous event they can cause, how you can recover from that hazardous events, and what the consequences are. And uh, it's a very, very powerful visual that uh, can really help you get people thinking about uh, how to assess a particular risks associated with particular hazards. Now, who do you want doing this risk assessment? Well, you want people that are familiar with the process. You want highly qualified people, but you also want a variety of viewpoints. Variety of viewpoints is so, so important for risk assessment because everyone is going to bring different experiences to the table, and those different experiences are going to help you see things that you would miss if you had a more limited group of, uh, of people doing the risk assessment or a more homogenous group of people. So it's really, really important to get as many and diverse viewpoints as possible when doing a risk assessment so that you can be as, try and be as comprehensive as possible in this risk assessment. And then the outcome of the risk assessment should really be a risk management plan, uh, which we emphasized is a iterative and ongoing process, the core of which involves identifying hazards, risks, how to mitigate them and control them, but also involves constant communication with all the stakeholders, the operators, the uh, designers, and involves uh, constant monitoring so that when changes occur, when new insights are gained, those can be incorporated into an updated risk management strategy. This risk management strategy also has to be well documented, has to cover a lot of different things. You have to define the scope really well. Then you have to identify what the hazards are and how you're controlling them, who's responsible for what, how you're going to maintain records to allow for continuous improvement and to identify weaknesses in the existing plan. Audits, also very important for identifying weaknesses in the existing plan. You can have very good record keeping to enable you to make data-based decisions. And you're going to have very thorough description of how this risk management strategy is implemented. And then you make sure it gets implemented like that. Now, despite all this effort, no, having a risk management plan by itself is not enough to eliminate hazards or eliminate risk associated with hazards, but it's the best you can do. You need to have this plan in place, it needs to be documented, and it is going to enable you to monitor and continuously improve your ability to manage the risks associated with your engineering design system. And this is the end of our review. I'll take a moment to uh, go over some references and our sponsors, and then you can proceed to the final quiz. Uh, these are the references that we've mentioned throughout the video. In addition, 
here are some problems specific references for workplace safety that uh, depending on what province you're in you need to be familiar with the intricacies of that specific province's requirements they'll generally be in a line with alignment with what we've discussed so far but each jurisdiction has its own nuance that should be observed finally we'd like to thank our sponsors the uh, Sudbury Integrated Nickel Operations, Mirarco Mining Innovation, Laurentian University, and uh, the catalyst for, for the development of this module, Minerva Safety Management Education. So without them, this wouldn't have happened. And now you can proceed to quiz six. Once you've completed quiz six, you will have completed this risk management learning module.